Now moving on to number two, we got f of x equals four minus x when x is less than or equal to four, and then ln of x minus three when x is greater than four. So I'm gonna go through the exact same process like I did in the first piecewise function. So I'm gonna deal with all the x values less than four, x values greater than four, and then the x values equal to four. And for the equaling four, I'm gonna use that definition of continuity to show that these two pieces, these two functions, are going to make the whole piecewise function continuous at that x value. So first let's start with x is less than four. Notice when x is less than four, the piecewise function is defined by the function four minus x, which is just a line, right? So it's just like a negative x plus four. Y equals mx, there's like a negative one here, the slope is negative one, plus b. And we know that this line here has a domain of xer. If we just look at this function on its own, not part of the piecewise function, but just the function four minus x. So what we can say is since, uh, let's write, uh, let's not put f of x, let's put since g of x equals four minus x, this line is continuous. Continuous for xer. That means that it's going to be continuous for x values less than four. Because x values less than four is within xer. So if the line is continuous for xer, that means it's continuous for x values less than four. And if we were to draw this line, let's make a sketch over here. Uh, four, there's a y-intercept here. And then notice if we plug in an x value of four here, we would get four minus four, which is zero. So there's gonna be an x-intercept of four as well. And so this is basically a line like that. And this is an x value of four. Right? And it's defined for all the x values less than or equal to four. So I put a dot there as well, but again, we're gonna discuss that x value for more detail at the end. All right, so that's for this part of the domain when x is less than four. Now, what about when x is greater than four? Notice when x is greater than four, it's defined by this function ln of x minus three. So let's do a quick review here. So ln of x, how does that look like? That looks like this. And then this here is the point uh, one and zero. It has an x-intercept of one. And then there's this vertical asymptote at that x value of zero. Well, ln of x minus three, basically it's this graph ln of x, but shifted three to the right. Notice that that d value is gonna be positive three. So we're taking this ln x, we're shifting it to the, um, to the right. And if you remember, the d value is always gonna be the vertical asymptote of a logarithmic function. So the d value is three, because the vertical asymptote here for the parent function was zero, if we shift it up uh, down by three, that means that there's gonna be a vertical asymptote at x is equal to three. And then this x-intercept of one, if we shift it by three, there's gonna be an x-intercept of four here. It's gonna be four and zero. All right, so this graph here is ln of x minus three. And so if we look at this graph here, I'm gonna erase this part. Notice that the function ln of x minus three is continuous for what? For all x values, for x values greater than three. Because that's the domain of the function. Notice all the x values have to be greater than three. They can't be equal to three because that is the vertical asymptote. They can't be less than three because then you're gonna get a negative number in the bracket and you can't take the logarithm of a negative number. You'd get undefined in your calculator. So 
other than this three here, notice that all the x values greater than three, ln of x minus three is continuous for all those x values greater than three. And so if it's continuous for x values greater than three, then um, let's write, therefore it is also continuous for x values greater than four because x values greater than four is within x values greater than three. So if it's continuous for all x values greater than three, it's also by deductive logic gonna be continuous for all x values greater than four, right? So this is an example of a function where that domain isn't XCR like it was for four minus x or for the trig functions we did below. But notice that this, domain x is greater than four is within this domain and it's continuous within this domain this specific function and so it's going to be continuous for x values greater than four right which means that the piecewise function is continuous for x values greater than four as well and what i'm going to do now is actually take that graph of ln x minus three and put it here for the piecewise function so notice that this x-intercept at 4 and 0 of this line and then this x-intercept are the exact same thing. And then um, this ln x minus 3 is defined for x values greater than 4, so I'm only going to put this part of the graph here for that entire graph for the piecewise function. So this is going to look uh, something like that. Right? So we showed that this piecewise function is continuous for x values less than four. We also showed it's continuous for x values greater than four. And now let's show that it's gonna be continuous for x values equal to four. And we're gonna do it again with this definition here. Now again, your teacher, your prof may allow you to just get away with showing that this, uh, function and this function have the exact same y value, a y value of zero at this meeting point of four, but sometimes they may require you to show that it's continuous at that meeting point using the definition. And just in case they want that, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we gotta go through these conditions. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta show that the limit as x approaches four of this piecewise function exists. And to do that, what we got to do is approach that x value of 4 from the negative side for the piecewise function and then approach that x value of 4 from the positive side of the function. And if we're approaching 4 from the negative side for this piecewise function, we're going to be using this function 4 minus x because that's to the left of 4. So notice that the limit as x approaches 4 from the negative side of this function, four minus x, this line, the y values are approaching zero. And then as we approach four from the positive side of this piecewise function, that's the same as approaching four from the positive side of this function, ln of x minus three, because that is the function to the right of x values greater than four, to the positive side of this piecewise function. And notice that that is going to be zero as well. So since we're approaching that y value of zero from both sides of four, it means that this limit, this general limit as x approaches four of the piecewise function exists. Not only does it exist, it equals zero, right? So that is condition one. Condition two, we gotta show that f of four is defined and notice that f of four, x value of four is defined here because this x is less than or equal to four. And so we would plug in that x value of four here into this function, not into this one because this is for x values greater than four, we'd plug it into this one because this one is defined for x values less than and equal to four. So f of four is equal to four minus four, if we plug in that x value of four here, which is equal to zero. And so notice both of these are equal. Notice that the limit as x approaches four of f of x 
is equal to f of 4. So condition 1, condition 2, condition 3. And since this holds here, uh, since the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x is equal to f of 4, therefore f of x, this piecewise function, is continuous at x is equal to 4. And we also showed that this function is continuous for x values less than 4, for x values greater than 4, and here for x values equal to 4, and that means that the function is continuous for all x values. That would be like the, um, the final ultimate concluding statement.